well, you know, it's Bible study. And I'm ready to go into the word of God that we can begin to just uh, go into our lesson tonight. And our thing tonight is what you think is what you become. So I want to go through that. We want to look at some scriptures concerning that. What you think is what you become. And this verse is so relevant because so many times we can get into they say or this one says or that one says. What does the word say? What does God say? Have you entertained that? Have you thought about? Have you began to grasp? Take into the whole perspective of what you're going through and inject the word of God. So what you think is what you become. All right. And we're going to look at it from the scriptural base today. Uh, you know, I'm just so excited because in this season that we're in, you know, when Jesus began to walk the earth because he was resurrected, you know, the dead began to walk as well. Graves open up. It is symbolic to us today that whatever the enemy has stolen, whatever he's tried to say, it'll never happen of your dreams and your visions. This is the time to believe God. This is the time to truly, truly trust in him. Oh, and watch God bring it to pass. So we need scriptural evidence. That's what we have today. See the infallible proofs that we have on today oh, that will open up your graves, that will cause your dead dreams and vision to begin to get up and take on life and begin to move uh -huh, on this earth and astonish those around them. I mean, there's no doubt infallible proofs of the resurrected Savior on the inside. One of the elements that will make that happen is what you think is what you become, most definitely. So let's look at some scriptures here for our scriptural base. Psalms 45. Look at Psalms 45. I'm going to turn to it because this is Bible study. And I like to do that because you know what it does? It gives you time to begin to uh, turn to that and gives you time to begin to go into it as well. So I have my Bible. I love my Bible. <laughs> and I'm always uh, studying and looking at that. But okay, you, you can use your device. You can use whatever you have. Just get the word. <laughs> okay, let's look at Psalms 45. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. And I want to look at verse 1. That's going to be our first scripture tonight that we will look at and share. And just to sum it up, I, I love it. I love it. It says, my heart overflows. I'm looking at the Amplified. I'm looking at the Amplified, okay? Uh, uh, that's where I'm reading from. Is that all right? Okay, so we're going to look at the Amplified, see what the Amplified says. Because uh, God has given us his word. And when we begin to take the word of God and use it and begin to think about it, meditate upon it, applying it in our daily lives, that's how you will become what you think. It will change your very nature. All right? Okay, okay. So let's read here. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. Psalms 45, verse 1. Are you with me? My heart overflows with a goodly thing. I address my psalm to a king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Oh, my goodness. Huh. And you know what? When you begin to get into God's word, he says, my heart overflows with a goodly thing. David was, he was a psalmist. He wrote songs. Everything, when you see the Psalms, P-S-A-L-M, when you see a psalm and then the psalms that David, all those that David wrote were a song, S-O-N-G. Oh, yes, he was a most gifted musician. And he could write songs and sing songs. And God had just blessed him. What am I saying to you? He said, my heart overflows with a goodly thing there in Psalms. I want you to know whatever talent, whatever gifting God has given you, oh, he'll just begin to increase it on the inside. Oh, yeah. He said, look here. He said, I, I, my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. 
God will begin to speak to you. And as you begin to declare what God says, get down in your heart. I'm telling you, he'll give you how to creatively speak, share those things that he has placed in your heart. That's going to begin to cause you to go from glory to glory down here on this earth. He'll give it to you. And it'll just begin to, as you open your mouth, he'll speak through you. My tongue becomes a ready writer. Oh, the pen of a ready writer. Oh, just ready to write. Just ready to write. You know when you got your pen, man, you're just waiting to hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, oh, oh, God to begin to speak to you in the different venues, areas you may be in and give you what to say. I had one of my members share with me. Oh, I was just so elated over this. And they said, you said, okay, God has always given me oh, down through the decades that when you first read the word, it's information. Then if you continue to meditate upon it and apply it, it's inspiration. And from that, you move into revelation. Let me tell you right now, people of God, when you would dare to do that, God, you're, let me tell you, your tongue is like a ready writer. He begins to just give you the words and your tongue just begins to declare and speak them. They were sharing with me how they used that with a job interview and how God, it, it was just God. His tongue was a pen, the pen of a ready writer, and began to take those very principles right there concerning wisdom and learning and applied it in a secular way to the job. Oh, yes, you know, you don't go being more spiritual than you ought. God gives you how to do. Oh, God is such a good God. And gave them just what to say. I'm telling you, that was one of the elements that pulled everything in for them, and I have no doubt about that. What am I saying to you? My heart overflows with a goodly thing. When you, because see, what you think is what you will become. When you are thinking about the word, and especially when you are receiving Bible study teachers as we do here, God has anointed me. God has called me, anointed me, appointed me for this time and for this hour as he gives me what to give unto his people. And as you receive that word and you begin to meditate upon this word and you begin to apply this word, I'm telling you, your tongue will be like the pen of a ready writer. What it, does that mean? That means that you're going to be good, be ready to speak those things that are good. It's just going to flow out of you. And so what David said, my heart overflows with a goodly thing. Ooh. I never run out of words. I never run out of things to write. You will never run out of God blessing you, giving you what to say and how to say. Be an instant, in season, out of season. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So he said here, see, and you begin to think that comes, that flows out because that's what you're thinking about. Where was David? He was out in the field. He was out there uh -huh, with the sheep and tending to them and seeing about them. The natural job that he had. But as he was doing that, he also was ministering unto the Lord. God was gifting him. See, let me tell you, don't you despise your small beginnings. If you will continue to trust God and stay with God in that timing, I'm telling you, and you meditate upon, you apply, you give the word of God first place. Oh, glory to God. And oh, I'm telling you, it'll just flow up out of you. Well, John said it. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And then we go, the next scripture, we're talking about our scriptural foundation now of what we're standing upon concerning this. I get it from the word of God. I know I love you. Praise God. And I want the best for you, but I want it to come from the word of God. Let's look at Proverbs 23 and 7. Mm -hmm. Go to that. You know, uh, Proverbs is right after Psalms. And you go to Proverbs 23 and 7. Yeah, I'm right here with you. It's just good to go into the Word of God, isn't it? That's what we do here. Amen. And as you look at that, um, it says, um, I, I love this, Proverbs 23 and 7. I could quote it without even going to it, but I'm going to read it. I quote it. I quote it very often. And it says, um, I'm going to read the Amplified again. For as he thinks, and that he holds no gender, you know, for as a man thinks, for as he thinks, but it's talking about God's creation man, and God created man, male, female, made he them. So I'm not just addressing um, the sexual orientation. I am addressing you as being um, the creation of God. 
And that's what the psalmist is doing here. So don't think you're left out at all. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As one who reckons, he says to you, eat and drink. Yet his heart is not with you, but is grudging the cause. Now, the first part of that is what I want you to get. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. See, so it, it, once you get the word down in your heart, it gives you the ability to choose. Once you get it in your heart, you begin to know what's right. There's just no way you can know what to do if you don't have the word down in your heart that gives you options, that give you choice. I got a baby son. He's always talking about options, options, options. And it's necessary. You get the word of God down in your heart. Then you have options concerning life. And see, as a man thinks in his heart, that's what it says, right? So is he. I love that. What you think about is what you become. <laughs> As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you see here, as you are, uh, uh, that that you will dare mm -hmm, to apply, that that you will dare to ponder on, that that the, you would dare to begin to, as um, one of the Greek words, mutter, which means to think about, as you begin to put it in your heart, so you will become. It gives you the ability to choose. When you start putting the word in your heart, you start finding out, I have choices. I do not have to accept this. Mm -mm. No, I'm going, mm -mm. everything, the, the enemy has been literally stealing from me. You, you, you see, once you start choosing, once you begin to know that I have a choice, then you begin to walk in wisdom. You don't have to accept what this world throws on you. You can get in there and find out what the word of God says. And then begin to think about it in your heart. What you think about is what you will become. And as you begin to think about that, mm, what did David do? David said, he delivered me from the paw of the lion. And he delivered me from the bear. Surely he shall deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. As you begin to want, ponder, think upon, uh -huh, get it down in your heart. Oh, yes. You begin to see, well, if he did this, he's going to do that. And if he did that, he's going to do this. Oh, it gives you wisdom to choose the right thing. It gives you wisdom to know the right thing. Mm, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, my goodness. I know what path to take. Yes, life will throw you challenges. Oh, yes. But as you begin to put the word in your heart and just begin to think on it. Begin to think about it. Oh, yes, yes. Set your affections on things above and not on things on this earth. As you begin to think about the heavenly things of God, what you think is what you become. <laughs> oh, what you choose to think about, what you choose to dwell on, mm -hmm. is, the, is the direction in which your life will go. So don't forget that. All right, let's look at the next scriptural base we have for tonight. Isaiah. Oh, yes. Isaiah. 14. Yeah. And verse 24. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah 14 and 24. It's the last verse in that chapter. I'm going to read again from the Amplified. I like the Amplified. I like them all, as you know. <laughs> I like every last one of them. Okay. It says, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely, as I have thought and planned, so shall it come to pass. Oh, I love this. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Oh, glory to God. Do you know you cannot stop God's plan? When God has planned it out, when God has moved and you've been decreeing and declaring that word of God, that's what shall stand. The purposes of God shall stand. How do you think Daniel knew that it was time for him to tell the people, oh yes, it's time now. It, the time is here to go back to Jerusalem because he was reading the word of God. Because he was thinking about the word of God. Oh, yes. And he knew by doing that, he knew God's plan. 
If when you begin to know God's plan, the enemy can't throw a lot of junk on you. Why? Because I know God's plan for me. It's good and it's not evil and it will bring me to a place of purpose. God said, my purpose shall stand. That that I have said, all my promises are yea and in me, amen. That's what God says to the glory of God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ. God has plans. He's already planned it out. It's nothing new. He didn't just plan it out when you were born. Oh, no. God had everything planned out. Why? Because God is an omniscient God. He knows everything. Huh? He knows every plan that he has made concerning you. Oh, yes. And you know what? God said, you know what? I already, I predestined. I predestined things even before. Oh, let me tell you. Before everything began, I had everything planned out. And when you begin to walk in that truth, when you begin to make the choice to believe the word of God, you're saying, God has a plan for me. I'm not going to accept the enemy's plan for me. God has a plan for me. I believe God. Oh, glory. When you start believing God, <laughs> whoo, glory to God. I'm telling you, everything begins to change then. That's the same thing that happened. Daniel just believed God. Mm -hmm. He believed God. And no matter what, he had read the word. He knew what the word said, what Jeremiah said, the, the seasons and all that. And when you begin to pray and you're standing on God's word, it is something that I can't explain. All I can say is that uh, the Holy Ghost, that, that river, that that you've been placing on the inside of you, that, that that you have let your heart overflow with goodly wisdom. That's reading the word of God. When you do that, let me tell you, when that time comes, nobody else may be moving. Nobody else may see it. But, oh, let me tell you, huh, something on the inside, God will just begin to tell you, just as he did with Moses when the people were standing still. He said, Moses, tell the people to go forward. <laughs> What was before them? The Red Sea. What was behind them? Oh, Pharaoh and his army. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. What did God say? He said, tell the people, Moses, to go forward. Mm. In this time that so many people have gotten stuck and so many people now are saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? All you got to do is start reading the word. God will give you choices. Don't wait for man to give you choices. God will give you choices. That's why it's a blessing be, to be tuned into this Bible study. It's a blessing to be receiving the word. Oh, yes. And oh, that's what he was saying. He said, oh. He said, my heart overflows with goodly things because I've been putting the word in my heart. Oh, glory to God. Then he said, oh, I've been thinking about it. I think about the word. For as a man thinking of his heart, so is he. I've been thinking about the word. been pondering on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. That's what David was doing out there in that field. And then we said, surely I have thought and so it shall come to pass. Oh, and God's purposes will stand. That that God have let me see. His plan that he's got for you, it's going to happen. Surely it shall come to pass. Oh, oh, by Shakta. Oh, glory. Mm. You know what? Because God just wants us. To, many times you, you, you get in a hurry. You, you pass God and what God's doing. No, 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 no. Wait on it. It'll happen. Habakkuk. Uh-huh. There in the second chapter. Write the vision. Make it plain so that they that read it can run with it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Then in the end of the third chapter, Habakkuk says, you know what? I don't see nothing happening. I've done all of that. I followed all the steps and, you know, reading the word, getting it in my heart. And, oh, writing it down. And, oh, glory to God. Getting excited about it. Doesn't seem like he said nothing is happening. No stalls. And no, uh, no cattle is leaping in the stalls. It's no, no, no olive is uh, that's growing on the branches. There, there's no productivity anywhere. What did he say? Oh, he said, yet, mm, yet I will rejoice. Ooh. He said, a joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me tell you, people of God, in those times when it seems like nothing happened, you just start praising him. You start rejoicing in God. Oh, you start ooh, blessing his holy name. I'm telling you, your thoughts will influence your outcome. Your thoughts will change those things around you. You better hear what I say on today because the enemy is trying to flood you with all of the, the outcomes that have happened from 2020. But let me tell you right now, if you just begin to read the word of God, what you think, come on, you better hear what I say. What you think is what you become. Not what the world says, but what you think what is what you become. 
I pray it's not what the world says. If you begin to get in the word of God, now you got to get in the word of God. You want to reap from the word, you got to be in the word. You'll reap, you reap from the flesh, okay? You reap corruption. Oh yeah, but if you reap from the word of God, you'll reap life everlasting. And so you want to do that. You want to get in there and uh, begin to move and in the spiritual, scriptural evidence that we have in the word of God, that what we will become, you will, you will become what you think. You will become what you think. You got to get it in your heart. You got to begin to uh, begin to think about the word. What you hear here tonight, that's what I always share with you and say, if there's a particular scripture that, that, that is sticking in your spirit, let's just put it like that. Something that you can't get away from. Stop and take the time. Oh, glory to God. And think about it. Let it get down into your heart. Oh, glory to God. How does that happen? When you're thinking about it, talk to yourself. That's just fine. Do you know your heart is just 11 inches from your mouth? And just begin to talk to yourself. Oh, it'll drop down in that heart. <laughs> glory to God. Ooh, for as you think mm, in your heart, so are you. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. As you think in your heart, so it is. Oh, and oh, when it's God's word, surely it will come to pass. Surely his purposes will stand. So let's move on now. We got the foundation. Glory to God. Your thoughts influence your outcome. Hands down. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at the next thing I want to talk about with you about tonight of how you create a new image on the inside of you when this happens. There's a whole new image that comes. If you allow God's word to create within you and to get in your heart and you start thinking about it and then you be, you believe it, oh glory to God, hallelujah, that it's going to come to pass no matter what happens, God's purpose shall stand. Oh, changes your outcome. Oh, to what the word of God says, to the new image that Christ has for you. That's what happened. See, the enemy wants to change your identity. The enemy wants to redefine your purpose. The enemy wants to begin to turn you around uh huh, because of what's on your mind. You can't get away from it. But I'm here to tell you right now, glory to God, your thoughts influence your, your outcome. And you got to allow God's word to create an image on the inside of you of the way he, God, want you to live. And then you begin to think and meditate upon it continually of how God wants you to live. There's nothing, can't nothing keep that from coming to pass in your life. Hear me well. Nothing can keep that from coming to pass in your life. If you allow God, if you allow, I just gave you the scripture basis, allow God to create this new image on the inside of you. Maybe you're not one that had good thoughts. There are some people, everything that come out of their mouths is negative. Start turning that around. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Why? Because the Bible says so. And you turn it around by what? Getting a scripture uh -huh, that you repeat every day. Oh, yes. You don't have to do a different one every day. Get that one down in your heart. It'll start opening up. I got one of my elders. I don't care where I am, when I am there. If I said, Elder, <laughs> what does Ephesians 3 and 20 say? Oh, he going to jump up. Mm, glory to God. Now unto him who is able. Ooh, glory to God. And when he get through declaring it, he starts shouting. Let me tell you, people of God, when you get it down in your heart, let me tell you, for as a man thinking, to start thinking about it, as you start thinking about it, that that's in your heart, according to the word of God, that's the way it's going to be. And you let the enemy know whatever challenge he brings up against you, that the word of God is going to stand that God's purpose shall not be aborted, that his, God's purpose shall not be canceled in your life. Let me tell you what's next. Your outcome is going to change and God will create a new image on the inside of you. Yeah, you won't recognize yourself. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you'll start living the way God wants you to live. You'll start thinking the way God wants you to think. Yeah. It happens. Glory to God. And this is every day. This isn't just on Wednesdays. This isn't, isn't just on Sunday. This isn't just when, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, let me find the scripture. Oh, I'm sick. Let me find. No, 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 no. This is continually. And when you do this, let me tell you, nothing can keep this from coming to pass in your life, which is the word of God. I'm telling you, it's true. All right. So 
What do we mean when it says, you see, when I said to you, if you meditate upon this continually, we're just picking this apart tonight. Meditate means to attend to. And to attend to means to give heed. Mm. And to give heed means to earnestly, intently hold on. Mark 4 and 24 in the Amplified. Yeah, yeah, that's where I am. Let's turn to it. I'm right here with it. Mark 4 and 24. Did you turn to it? You got it? Okay, we're going there. Talking about creating a new image on the inside. All right? You got to you gotta take heed. You got to be intentional. Oh, yeah. You got to tend to it. got to be earnest, intentional. Yeah, you got to purposely, intentional, earnest about it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I am praying every day. Doesn't take three to five minutes. That's it. You can pray that Lord's Prayer. Yes, you can. You start out, and I tell you, that prayer will get to turn it. God will do what he wants to do. His purpose shall be fulfilled. Mark 4, 24, you have it now. I'm reading from the Amplified. The measure of thought. And study, you here to the truth, will be the measure that comes back to you. That's what it says. That's it right there. And and, and I love it because it says, mm -hmm. and unto you that hear shall more be given. I like that on the end. And unto you that hear shall more be given. So the measure of thought and study. That God gives. And then you see that you hear. Because if you're here, then you, if when you really hear, there should be an action that follows. I don't know. Those of us that have raised kids, you know, there are times that you would be talking to kids. They're standing right there. And you can tell them, what did I say? <laughs> they can't repeat it. Why? Because they really didn't hear you. When you hear, it goes past the First, the, 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 right there, this, this whole physical structure into your inner ear. And when it goes into that inner ear, it's going into your innermost parts. You really, and, and that's, it's going to cause for an action to be taken. All right? And so this is why I said right here, the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth will be the measure mm, that comes back to you. If you believe that unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly more than we could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh within, within you. If you really believe that when you read that word and then what? You give that some thought. Hmm. I'm thinking about this. All right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start cutting some time in the morning from sleeping and I got to wake up. And because uh, I want to study this out, I want to go a little further with this. Uh, I'm going to take an extra few minutes at my break time or lunch time. Yeah, because even though people are working out of your homes, you still have those breaks and lunch time. I, I'm going I, I, I'm going to study this out. I'm going to think about this. And then sometimes I know when you want, you know, uh, want to uh, memorize a verse, take that time. To memorize, to begin to speak it and declare it over and over and over again. What did the woman with the issue of blood do? It says in the Bible, it says that when she got to Jesus, the word that's used there, that when she got ready to touch the hem of his garment, the word that's used there is saying that she had said to herself, the Greek word there is that she had said it over and over and over to herself in her time. Oh, yes, a pondering, thinking about. Getting that word down in a heart. So shall it be with you. See, in that time that you're pondering about, think about, get that word down in your heart. Oh, glory to God. That's the way your outcome is going to be. What did she do? Oh, she said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, ooh, I shall be made whole. That is exactly what happened. She be, became just exactly what she thought. Her life, the whole outcome of her life was influenced oh by what she was thinking and began to declare out of her mouth let me tell you as you begin to 
think, those thoughts that you have, it'll change your outcome. Her whole outcome was changed. It says that Jesus turned to her and said, your life mm -hmm, is made whole. W-H-O-L-E. He didn't just say you're healed from this infirmity. He said your life is made whole. In other words, everything that the enemy has stolen from you is returned. Her whole outcome was changed. And we know that Jesus wants us healed. Oh, yes. By his stripes, we are healed. Glory to God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So we know that God wants us healed. Oh, oh third John 3 and 2. Listen, little children, don't let me tell you something. It's God's will that you prosper and be in good health. <laughs> That's his will. We know his will. She had been pondering upon knowing what the purpose of God was and that it was going to stand. She had been pondering about knowing the word of God, that it shall come to pass. Now, what she was standing on was there in Malachi, where the people had touched. It says that when they touched the wings, oh, yes, they were healed. And she that those wings were those, those strands that hang out from the prayer cloth that Jesus had around him. That's why she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment. She was talking about that prayer cloth. Oh, glory to God. That had all of the wings, that had all of those strings that were hanging down there. She said, if I can just touch those, I'll be healed. Hallelujah. She was just thinking about it and pondering about it because it says in Malachi, how when they touched her, mm -hmm, how when they touched that, the, the, the wings there of, of that prayer cloth and, and they were healed. She said, now, I want that same thing. When you start thinking about what the word says and you begin to take it and make it personal to your situation. Oh, let me tell you, it shall come to pass and the purpose of God shall stand. And his purpose is for you to be healed. His purpose is for you to prosper. God wants that for us. Okay. And so we got to begin to do what we have to do scripturally. And as you do it, it will change your outcome. It changed her outcome. Glory to God. God is so good. Now, let's also look at Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. Another one that's a good one. So let's go back to the Old Testament there. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Talking about how God will create a new image on the inside of you from the word of God. And you'll start walking in confidence and victory as never before, where you were walking in defeat as well as just being overwhelmed by what the enemy had done. I'm telling you, God to turn the whole situation around. It creates a new image on the inside of you. All right, Proverbs 4. I, you know, these are great scriptures. Great scriptures. Uh, verses 20 through 22. My son. Attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Oh, let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center uh, of your heart. For they are life to those that find them. And I'll just stop right there. Whatever the enemy is killing in your life, whatever the enemy, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Whatever he is killing, whatever the enemy is at work, get the word. Get the word and, and, and let the word create a new image on the inside of you. You see, don't see defeat. Oh, yes, you got a lot of people that talk defeat. You got a lot of people that have everything negative to say. But no, see the victory. See the positive side of what God is able to do in your life. Let him create a new image on the inside of you. And as you do that, right here, Solomon wrote the Proverbs. He's David's son. And David, Bathsheba, taught Solomon the word. And this is where David said to him, my son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. You know, we have to teach our children down through generations. What? 
what the word of God says. And we have to live it out before them because context without context doesn't give the proper understanding. But as you begin to live it out before them, the content of the word, then that that you're declaring and saying, the context of the word will be evident. They'll see the evidence of it. Oh, yes. And it will hold in their lives. So here David and Bathsheba had taught Solomon. And they were saying, attend to my words. Glory to God. Now, submit to these sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. David was saying, ah, oh, it worked for me and it's going to work for you. But you must also use the same application and get it to work. You know, you gotta, you got to begin to grab hold of the word. You the one, uh -huh, what did it say? That you've got to get the word in your heart until it overflows. You've got to begin to think of the word of God in your heart. Oh yes, on a daily basis, glory to God. And you got to know that you know that surely as you are thinking, the thoughts that you have concerning the word of God, it shall come to pass. Surely the purposes that God has spoken concerning you, they shall stand regardless of the challenges. You get that in your heart. Oh, God will begin to influence your outcome. And so this is what you must teach to your children. And you can't, you, 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 that's as bad as just, just say what I say. Don't worry about what I do. You just do what I say do. That way you do that. No, 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 no. You must teach context and content. They, mm -hmm, they must hear you saying it and see you living it. Makes a difference. Yes, yes, yes. And so when this happens, it'll create a new image on the inside of not only you, but those that lives that you're touching, those that are around you. If God has called you in ministry, oh yes, and as Paul said, we all got ministries. Uh, it may not be from a pulpit, but God has called you to share his word. God, if, there will be those that God will send your way that you'll share testimony with. Yep, that's ministry right there. Oh yes, yes, yes. You know, so don't just think it all comes from a pulpit or when we are such as I am doing right now. God has ministry in many different ways that he has called. See, when he's called you unto that, he's equipped you mm -hmm, to do that. <laughs> and so we see here that he said, you know, my son, attend to my words. Oh, glory to God. Ah, you know, let them know you got to submit to these saying. You're going to get your own testimony if you will do this. Oh, you're going to see God bring it to pass. You're going to see God. Oh, purposes stand regardless to what the enemy would try to do in your life. So he was teaching. He said, for they are life to those that find them. I love that on the end. They are life to those that find them. So what? There's a choice again. If you want to accept life or death. Mm. They are life to those that you find the word of God and you begin to make the word of God first place in your life. Oh, let me tell you, it'll change. It'll, it'll change things, your outcome. And as it change your outcome, it creates a new image on the inside of you. You become more confident. You begin to declare and to speak the word. Oh, glory to God. Ooh, unashamed in any manner. Glory to God. But with wisdom, knowing when to speak and how to speak. Oh, yeah. God is a good God. Huh. So I want to I want to tend, I want to deal with the word attend in this verse. In the Hebrew, it means to be completely devoted to. All right. It also means I love this to be addicted to his words to the point that you cannot get enough of them. <laughs> that you're always comparing and seeing the word of God. <laughs> No matter what's going on or how it's going on, you see, you see a principle, you see something that relates to the word of God. Oh, glory to God. So this kind of commitment to the word of God, it will drastically change um, the way that you see yourself. Drastically change. That's right. You see, glory to God. And I found that the most successful Christians and believers in this world are those that have learned to see themselves as God sees them. Yeah, yeah, you, you, most successful. And and you find out that what your purpose is. And is that not what the whole world is? Like? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? When you start seeing yourself as God sees you, you begin to find out you know, what my purpose is. And you refuse to give up until that mission is accomplished. It doesn't matter what anybody say and how they say it. You know what your purpose is. You know what God has called you to do. And it does not matter. You can be sick. 
And hey, you're still, as on your mind, is thinking. You're thinking about it. As soon as God gives you strength, you're up and moving again. There can be challenges financially, but you know what? You're still seeing the great things that God has purposed. Oh, yes, because you're in that word and you've committed to that word. Oh, it creates a whole new image on the inside of you that in the midst of defeat, you see God give you victory. You see the victory. You can't stop. You just can't stop. It is, it, the word of God is a life force on the inside of you that propels, causes you to keep moving even when what? You want to stop yourself. What did, did, what, did, uh, what did Abraham say? He said, you know what? I, I, I began to believe where there was no hope. I just believed against hope. There comes a time when it seems like you just run out and run out and say, oh, you know, and uh, everybody, just as Job's wife and everything, said, you know what? Why don't you just stop? Curse your God and die. My God, man, how much? But no, when you get it down on the inside of you, you are committed. Glory to God. You cannot stop. The word of God is a life force on the inside. And it just begins to move you. When this body said, want to lay down, it's uh-uh, get up. Oh, start moving in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. When the enemy says because of challenges you cannot do, the word of God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That word becomes a life force on the inside. And as you meditate upon it, as you earnestly give earnest heed to it, glory to God, commit your way unto it. And you begin to ponder on it. You're thinking about it. Huh? Glory to God. There's a new image that will form on the inside of you. Uh, and you know that you know that you know. Oh, as you begin to discipline your thoughts. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Oh, and you only think God's thoughts, what God's word is saying. It'll begin to enhance your vision about life. That's exactly what it does. It, it enhances you so, oh, uh, concerning life. Oh, that it brings an energy with it. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. And when you do that, you know that you're the one that have complete control over your thoughts. Not your body, not your finances, not circumstances, not somebody else. And that your life will tend to go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. You begin to realize that, understand, and you begin to submit to that. It changes your image on the inside. <laughs> and so, as you think, that's the way it goes. Let's see, what does the Greek say concerning think? The word think from the, the from the literal Greek means to suppose, to form an opinion, to perceive, to apprehend. Mm. Oh, it, it, to suppose. What if? Mm -mm. What if? Oh, suppose God blesses me. Oh, delivers me, heals me. Do you ever think about that? Well, are you all oh, the only thing you're thinking about? is um oh let me see oh i hurt so bad all night i did this all night and that may be a fact but it's not the truth and see the thing is you gotta suppose what happened when jairus's daughter had died and jesus was there mm -hmm. he had come at the request of jairus and and the servant came around said no sense in bothering the master anymore you know your, your daughter is dead Jesus looked and he looked at Jairus. He told him, he said, only believe. Only believe. Uh, he got to the house. He put all the doubters out. Went in and what? Resurrection came. He changed everything. The word of God will change everything. I'm telling you, from death to life, just that drastic. It will change everything. Psalms 31. If you read verse 14 and... Uh, no, Psalm 77. Psalm 31 is good, too, that you can read the last verses. But Psalm 77 and verse 14, you know, it says that our God is a God that will make things happen. Oh, he showed everybody what he could do. Psalm 77 and 14 in the Message Bible. Then if you go on down and read those verses, the next four or five verses, it's, it, and it goes on to talk about how God will pull you through the deep waters. He'll pull you out through the deep waters. And then I loved it. It said, you know what? God just walked through the deep waters, strolled, it says. <laughs> Message Bible. He strolled through the deep waters 
and they didn't even know that he had come and was gone. I'm telling you, God will move so quick to heal you and deliver you when you begin to think on his word. See, what you think is what you become as you begin to think on that word of God, his purpose, and then just begin to pray adventure, to suppose, oh, and then form your opinion concerning it. In other words, you make your choice. It's going to stand. It shall come to pass. Oh, whoa, whoa, glory to God. And then to proceed, to dare to begin to get it into your heart so, so, so much so that you've already moved into your healing. You're already acting like it is so. Oh, glory to God. And then to apprehend. In other words, this is my, this is my blessing. God's going to do this thing for me. God's going to bring this to pass. This is the way we have to be. If he did this, he's going to do that. If he did that, he's going to do this. Do you see what I'm saying, people of God? You've got to begin to apprehend what God has said. In other words, take it to yourself. Make it personal. Say it's mine. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. It's my healing. Oh, don't, don't settle for what the world says because everybody else this way. I'm telling you right now, God is able to do. But we must begin to what? Suppose. We must begin to form an opinion. We must begin to proceed. And we must begin to apprehend. Oh, God is such a good God. I'm telling you, when you do those things, it will create a new image on the inside of you. Mm. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, we're in Bible study. The third thing I want to talk about is recapture your zest for God's best. Ah, recapture your best. Your zest for God's best. All right. You know, uh, Paul lets us know that uh, uh, success is the result of thinking on the right things. All right. And life can, can, can really try to get you down. That, that we're coming out of a year that it has thrust you forth. There's, as I said, it's been a birthing. And wherever there's a birthing, it's just such a mess. It's just such a mess. And in the birth, it is so much. And, uh, and so here we are coming into the new mm -hmm, normal. So Paul says to us, he said, success is the result of thinking the right things. Philippians 4 and 8 in the Bible. Again, let's look at the Amplified. Now, Philippians is in the New Testament. Philippians 4 and 8. Go there. We're going to look at it. Okay. I'm going to read the, the Amplified to you again. Is that okay? All right. Um, I'll read it from my notes because I, I sort of uh, succinctly put it. But you need to read the whole thing. Whatever is worthy of reverence is honorable and seemly. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious. If there is any virtue and excellence, I like that word. If there's anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Woo. Fix your mind. Fix it. Oh. Fix. Set. Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on, this is where my mind goes to the word. It's fixed on that. Oh, oh, oh. And so, that, see, Paul, well, listen, when you think on the right things, success comes. What, what, what does think? Think in this verse. In the literal Greek means to make these things the, the subject of your thoughtful consideration mm. or to carefully reflect on them. Mm. I look at that like critical thinking. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't just look at it on the surface. Critical thinking. Oh, yeah. Let's let's really, really get to the nuts and the bolts of this. The King James Version says we are to think only on things that are of a good report. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. When you make this um, habitual in your life, this, it's just a habit. You'll always be enthusiastic. I don't care what's going on and how it's going on. 
when you begin to think on the word, it, it, there's an enthusiasm, enthusiastic bubble that just begins to flow out of your spirit. Yeah, it is. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Oh, glory to God. And the enthusiasm that comes with the word of God. Oh, the word. Listen, the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos, which means God within. Oh, 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 oh. the word enthusiasm. When you get enthusiastic, oh, that's God within. That's In other words, I don't care what the world tries to say, uh-huh, that you think you happy over. It's not the real thing. Uh-uh. It's the word of God on the inside of you that brings true enthusiasm. Oh, glory to God. And 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 you know what that simply means, God within? It simply means that you have the ability to see what God sees. Have you ever what have you ever just known that you know? This that God's going to do in your God's going to deliver me. God's see the good things, the good things in your life that you know that you know. It's because you see what God sees. That's what really pulls it on into you and you settle it in your spirit. That's why I'm giving these dynamics in the order that I'm giving them. Because if you don't start making the choice, if you don't start choosing to think, if you don't start uh, uh, thinking on the word of God and allow it to create an image on the inside of you, how? By saying it over and over. What am I saying? I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I'm healed today. I'm healed tomorrow. I'm healed the next day. I am healed. I don't care what anybody says. The word of God is where I'm fixed. Mm -hmm. Out of wisdom, I'm going to go and see what's going on and see what's happening. and keep. But out of, oh, uh, I am fixed on the word of God. Oh, glory to God. And as a man thinks in his heart, that that you are fixed on, that's what's going to come to pass in your life. Glory to God. I believe the good report. Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? Oh, and he answers, we shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So as you begin to, to move and get enthusiastic about it, and, and, and when you when you start getting the word on the inside and you, you start applying it every day and saying this, you know, it's quoting a certain scripture. I'm telling you, the word of God just opens up. It's a panoramic view. And when you start seeing it, ooh, God within. You get excited because you have you begin to see what God sees. It, it's just exciting and exuberant. And when you just start thinking the right thoughts, it, 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 it's, it yields this in your life. Glory to God. When you start thinking the right thoughts and speaking the right words, and, and remaining joyful in adversity, no matter what. Come on. Never losing your enthusiasm. Let me tell you, ooh, it'll make you a winner every time. Every time. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time. So, as you begin to move in the powerful keys that I have given you on tonight, glory to God, you will start enjoying God's best for your life. Oh, yes, you will. That's why yeah, uh, I don't. I, I, I do not want to be in the company around connected to those that are always having stinking thinking. Uh, uh. Deliver me. I'll deliver myself and remove myself from that. But why? Because I'm fixed on connecting, aligning myself, agreeing with what the Word of God says. I'm allowing it to create a new image on the inside of me. And let me tell you, you don't do that once. You do that with every adversity that you come up against. You allow the word of God, oh, from the scriptural basis, to begin to be applied to your thought life. Oh, yes, and you begin to think on that. Oh, get committed to it. Get committed to reading a scripture every day. Commit to praying every day. You can do it. It doesn't take that long. The Lord's Prayer is three to five minutes. That you can pray the Lord's Prayer, not running through it, but taking your time. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Uh-huh. Just got a few verses there that you can read. That's the Lord's Prayer. Yes. And then also read a scripture out of your Bible. One of the scriptures that I'm saying on tonight, it's got to be something that really, really causes your spirit to perk up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where you need to write that down. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. There's something in that word 
pull that's going to create a new image on the inside of you concerning a certain area of your life that you're being challenged in. Not one time, every time. That's why it's a blessing to go to church. It is. And that's what we're doing right here. It's a blessing to be here on Wednesday nights. It's a blessing to be here Sunday morning. It's a blessing to fellowship and connect up. Oh, yes. And those that you're talking to, you're talking to those things about those things that are good and of a good report. It's not always a thee and a thou and a thither, as I said many times, which meaning that it's a direct quote from the Bible. But what it is, it is yet you're thinking about it. You're applying it. You're submitting to it. And so then that that overflows from your heart is yet moving in the standard, the purposes of God oh, huh? and, and his plan. That's exactly what I'm saying. Those that you're around, oh, th those things that are lovely. Oh, sometimes, you know, let me tell you, if you're in a group that does nothing but talk about people, you need to exit from that because that's going to tend uh -huh, to take your life into the direction that I believe that's not what you want because you're tuned in here, that you want those things that are good. You want those things that are of a good report. You want the greatness of God to manifest in your life. You want God to change things, your whole, the whole picture of, of what you are dealing with right now. Well, you can't be in an environment. You have to change your environment. You got to set your environment. Oh, glory to God. With the word of God, you have fixed it and Fix yourself there. You fix yourself right there. When you do that, I'm telling you right now, your life will become what you think about every time. Well, don't lose your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll bubble up on the inside of you. Uh, it, it's a good feeling to win, isn't it? Uh huh. And the enemy will come and try to steal your joy. Don't you lose your enthusiasm. No, you stay in the word. Get in that word. Oh, I'm giving you these powerful keys today that will that will cause you to enjoy God's best in your life every time. Don't lose your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. If you do, you're going to stop growing and you're going to stop up accomplishing. Yeah, you will. Mm -hmm. Hold on to your enthusiasm. That's why the enemy tries to steal your joy. He wants you to stop growing. He wants you to stop accomplishing. No, get happy about it. Huh? Throw yourself a party. <laughs> Get happy yourself. If those you thought would be happy for you and they're not, dismiss them. Oh, yes. Oh, that's what you got to do. You have to accept it, dismiss it, move on. Mm, God is good. God is good. And so you, you don't want you don't want to lose enthusiasm. Your life will get dull and you'll find your life just begin to be boring and uneventful. Nothing's happening. That's why that group, that's the way they talk and get away from that. No, I want to enjoy life and I want to enjoy God's best for my life. I must hold on to my enthusiasm. Glory to God. I don't want to become lethargic. I don't want to be complacent. Uh, mm, I can't afford for this to happen. I can't allow this to happen. This is why you have to read and pray every day because it'll come in. In this world, we should have it, okay? You got to stir yourself up. In the word of God, hallelujah, and get just just get completely enthralled in what God has to say. I mean, just get into it. Oh, glory to God. And when you find out what God says you can be, oh, glory to God, what you can have and what you can do, <laughs> that right there makes you happy. Oh, when you begin to get in the word of God and you begin to attend to it and pull it to you, oh, glory to God, hallelujah, you will recapture the zest for God's best. There's no way that the enemy can keep you down. I don't care what the challenges may be. Oh, you refuse to be lethargic and complacent, but you're standing on the promises of God's word. Who? Glory to God. Seeing what you can be, what you can have, and what you can do, whoo, you'll recapture your zest for God's best. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just like a shot. Let's look at 1 Timothy. I got another scripture. Verse 4 and 15. It says, meditate upon these words. That's in the New Testament. 1 Timothy 4 and 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. God's going to shut the mouth of the devil, the gainsayer. God said, I want your profiting to 
to be seen by all. First, what God has done on the inside and creating a new image in you. Turning your thoughts around to those things that are pure and lovely. Turning those thoughts around that you that you begin to fix yourself because you know if God said it, it shall come to pass. And when God purposes concerning you that you read that in that word of God, you know it's going to stand. Ooh, glory to God. As that begins to happen, mm, that new image on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. And you begin to suppose and you begin to, to form your opinion mm, for, about the word of God. You begin to perceive. Oh, and then you begin to apprehend. <laughs> Ooh, you're talking about some great things, some mighty things. Oh, you begin to think. Mm, as you think in your heart, so shall it be. Mm, just thinking. Thinking the right thoughts. Oh, yes, makes a difference. Speaking the right words makes a difference. Remaining joyful in adversity makes a difference. Never losing your enthusiasm. Mm, being a winner. Not sometimes, but every time. Even when the enemy thinks that he got over, God will give you a plan. That's where he come in and go out and they don't even know it. Ha! Woo! God is so good. So he's saying, if you meditate upon these things, give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting, thy profiting may appear unto all. All right. The amplified, the amplified version says, throw yourself wholly into them. Throw yourself wholly into them. This is what I think. And this is, a, I'm not just going to think this. I'm not going to just be a hero. I'm going to be a doer. I'm going to begin to act like it's already done. Wholly into it. The literal Greek means to extend every part of your being. Mm. Put myself, my soul into it, my spirit into it, my body into it. Throw yourself wholly into it. Mm. What God says about you mm. with enthusiasm. Just, just, just be so en enthused about it. And don't let anything cause you to abandon that. See, the enemy wants you to abandon it because it's yours. It's yours. So don't think that you get there one time and, oh, I got it. I got it. No. Every time the challenge comes, every time adversity comes, you have to begin to let the enemy know, I'm standing on scripture concerning this. You have to fix yourself on that. Oh, yes, you do. And allow God to create a new image in you concerning that particular adversity. That's why a lot of things you go through. And you say, oh, I thought I was stronger than that. You mean to tell me that? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. You just got to get on using your weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hopes, bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ. Okay? And so that's what you got to do. And, and recapture your zest for God's best. Every time the enemy tries to cause you to abandon that thought, the devil is a lie, and you start meditating on you. Throw yourself wholly into the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw yourself wholly into it. Uh, let the devil know he just shouldn't have messed with you. You believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're, in, you're excited about it. You're enthusiastic about it. So you throw, throw all caution to the wind. Oh, yeah, just uh, whoo, take a risk and dare to believe that you can become what God says you can become. Mm -hmm. Oh, you will become what you think. Oh, glory to God. Not sometimes, every time. <laughs> what you think is what you become. And so as you do that, now I've said all this just to make this point. God wants this to be the most extraordinary year that you have ever experienced. Uh oh, mm, mm. oh yes he does, he does. However, here it go, you must apply the principles of his word. You must do that. If you don't do it, this will be just another ordinary year of your life. I'll say it again, God, wants this to be the most extraordinary year you have ever experienced. But you must 
apply the principles of his word or it will be just another ordinary year in your life. Don't be satisfied with the ordinary. Don't be satisfied with business as usual. Don't, 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 don't. Why settle for ordinary when you can have extraordinary? Set yourself. Oh, no. That what God has planned, it shall come to pass. No. That what God's purpose is for your life, it shall stand. Now get in that word. Create a new image on the inside of you. Submit to that word. Seek God do some great and mighty things. Begin to think about it. Oh, yes. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You will become what you think. What you think is what you become. Know that. And know that this is going to be a great year. What do I say? Buckle your seatbelt. Because it's going to be an awesome ride. In the spirit, through the word of God. Oh, come on, give God some glory. Give God some praise on today. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. See yourself perceiving what the word of God says. Don't accept what they say. Accept what the word of God says. Submit to it. Watch it come to pass. <laughs> God is so good. Isn't he a good God? Oh, I tell you, this has been wonderful on today. Oh, oh, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm, you will. What you think is what you will become. Well, it's offering time.